Um, <clears throat> we'll start by talking about finding critical values from a normal distribution. Critical values are used in hypothesis testing. They're always dependent on the type of test. Uh, it would be a right tail, left tail, or two tail test. And the critical value is related to the area of the rejection region. Uh, which in turn is actually determined by the level of significance. The test statistic will always have a particular distribution and in this in the problems that we'll do today we will just consider a normal distribution. In other words we'll assume that the test statistic has a normal distribution. So in the first problem we have a test statistic of 1.92. The 1.92 is actually calculated using some formula appropriate for a test. I'm not telling you what that formula is, um, but in practice we have to find this number using a formula, the data, and so forth. Um, so, since this is a right tail test, I'd go ahead and sketch the rejection region on the right hand side. The area of the rejection region will be equal to the alpha that we start with, which in the problem is 0 0.05. And we are looking for the number right there, and that number is Z alpha. Z alpha is denoted as Z alpha because Z corresponds to a standard normal distribution. And all test statistics are standard normal. In other words, they have a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. And we denote a subscript of an alpha to indicate that the area in the tail is alpha. So by all means, when we write Z alpha, Z refers to standard normal, and alpha refers to the tail area. So, how do we find this number? Z alpha is given by inverse norm of the area below or area to the left. An important remark here is we use I and V or inverse functions in finding critical values. So I know that the test statistic is normally distributed and I also know that I'm looking for a critical value. So by combining the facts together, I identify that the function that I have to use is I and the norm. And I and the norm is a standard way, uh, is a standard function that is available on the calculator, a TR83 or a TR84. So press second start or second fast and you'll see option number three is inverse norm and the calculator would always want the area below now area below the point that we're looking for so if the area above z sub alpha is 0 0.05 the area below is 1 minus 0 0.05 because the area under the entire normal curve is 1 so in order to find the critical value we will have 1 minus 0.05, which is inverse norm of 0.95, and when I plug that into the calculator, I'll find the answer to be 1.6448, commonly it's written as 1.645. Even before we start the problem, with a little bit of common sense, we can understand that whatever critical value that we will find will be positive because zero is in the middle and z alpha 
is on, on the right tail and on the right tail the numbers are positive the critical values are positive so if by some chance you get a negative number you just have to stop and think could that be possible in this particular problem you cannot have a negative critical value because the critical value is on the right side and by all means the right critical value is called as a positive critical value let's try a different problem so here is a scenario where the test statistic is negative 2.08 and the test is a left tail test. Um, the test statistic has a normal distribution and the level of significance is 0.1. So since this happens to be a left tail test, we place the area, the rejection region area on the left side. The area of the rejection region is 0.1 which is nothing but alpha, we denote this by negative z alpha because zero is in the middle so whatever critical values that I'm about to find is expected to be negative. So in order to find negative z alpha I'll be using the same function in this norm and I'll be typing in area below or area to the left of negative z alpha in this problem, the area below negative z alpha is just 0.1. And if I type that in using the same function, second as option number 3, 0.1, I get negative 1.2815. Clearly, you can see that negative 1.2815 is a negative critical value. Another important remark here is that if you know one critical value, you can actually find the corresponding positive critical value. In other words, um, if you wondered what z alpha is, z alpha is just the negative of negative z alpha. So I have negative 1.2815 and that would give me 1.2815. In other words, if I flip the rejection region from the left tail onto the right tail, and if I ended up having something like this, the area, now I move it to the right, the area is 0.1, and I'm looking for that number, Z alpha, and Z alpha, if you want to find it the way we did last time, we did it as inverse norm area below. Inverse norm area below the point is 0.9. So it would be inverse norm of 0.9 or 1 minus 0.1. And if I did that, I will get 1.2185. So, what we can see is, since the normal distribution is symmetric about zero, the left tail critical value can be obtained in terms of the right tail critical value, and the right tail critical value can be obtained in terms of the left tail critical value, just by multiplying by negative one. So, where does this come into play? Obviously, it is not important in the previous problem or in this problem because we were either looking for a positive critical value or a negative critical value. But there are cases where we would want to find both critical values. In such scenarios, you don't have to find both of them, but you just have to find one of the critical values and you multiply it by negative one, you find the other. And one such scenario is a two-tailed test. So here we have a test statistic of negative 1.608 in a two-tailed test where the test statistic has a normal distribution and the level of significance is 0.01. So since this is a two-tailed test,
The area of the rejection region must be divided into two pieces and allocated on both tails. So the area on the left is alpha over 2, the area on the right is also alpha over 2. So in total, when you add the two areas, we end up getting the original alpha. So you have to keep in mind in a hypothesis test, the entire area must be equal to alpha. The entire area of the rejection region must be equal to alpha. So now that we know the areas in both tails, we could say that we're looking for that point. That point now is denoted by Z sub alpha over 2. And that point right there, it is denoted by Z sub alpha over 2. Excuse me, the point on the left is negative z sub alpha over 2, and the point on the right is z sub alpha over 2. So, as I mentioned in the previous problem, I don't have to find both critical values, you just have to pick one. Now, I like to pick one depending on the political orientation, so I pick left. So, negative z alpha over 2 would just be equal to inverse norm of the area below negative z alpha over 2 and the area below negative z alpha over 2 is just alpha over 2 which is 0 0.005 so if I type in inverse norm point 0 0.005 I will get negative 2.5758 which is 6. But if you realize that negative z alpha over 2, if you multiply by negative 1, you get positive z alpha over 2, the right tail critical value would just be 2.576. But if you refuse to do this, and if you said, no, I don't have to use this multiplication trick, um, I multiply by negative 1 and multiply by negative 1. If you refuse to say, if you refuse that, oh, I don't want to do this multiplication trick, I just will evaluate it on my own, more power to you, you could do it that way also. Um, Z alpha over 2 would just be equal to inverse norm area below the right tail critical value. So if the area above is 0 0.005, the area below is 1 minus point. 005. So that is inverse norm of point 0.995. So if you type that in the calculator, you will find two point five seven five eight as the answer, which is nothing but two point five seven six. So here I showed you how to find critical values using a calculator if the test statistic has a normal distribution. You might be wondering how people accomplished this task uh, before calculators and before computers came into existence. Uh, back then we had to make use of what we call um, Z tables. Um, Z tables can also be used to find these critical values, um, but that is actually a, a different approach and it calls for a different video and I'm not combining that here with this video but uh, if you're wondering if there is an alternative approach to the calculator approach the alternative approach would be to use a Z table. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you.